Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. I'm Grumpy Grandpa Gaming, and this is episode 17 of a Rebel Summer 61 campaign using the AOM mod. So, uh, last episode, we had quite a few battles. We had uh, four battles that we fought at. We had the, what I consider the second day of the ninth battle of Manassas, because it did happen the day after the ninth battle, so we just called that one the second day of it. The Battle of Jefferson City Ferry, Missouri. With the uh, Army of Missouri pushing out the Second Corps of the Army of Southwest Missouri from Jefferson City. The Second Battle of Cumberland Gap with the uh, Third Corps Army of Virginia. And they're still in the area. They're just sitting here defensively right now. And the Battle of Topeka, Kansas, with the siege train engaging the 1st Corps Army Southwest Missouri. Now, they're all still in this area, and they're tritting out. This is my biggest headache right now, outside of the uh, Mississippi River fleets, which we also did engage with our Vicksburg squadron. Uh, our two ironclads did outsized damage to these fleets. So, uh, it's only showing the one ship here right now. That's going to be reloaded the game. One ship's withdrawn. Uh, Virginia's withdrawing itself. Uh, we sunk four of their fourth rates. Which is not a big deal, sinking the fourth rates. But we did a lot of damage to these two fleets. So, doesn't look like they're going to retreat from the area just yet. But I do need them to get retreat north of Cairo. So I can unblock all my uh, ports down here in the southern mist. All right, so plans going forward. Oh, and also Lee has finally made it into uh, Cairo. Finally. So he should get a bigger buff from uh, writing this. Yeah, he's getting a bigger buff from being in Cairo. So hopefully he's going to be good to go by mid-June. And I can get him moving again. I want him to leapfrog past the traveling harem and get up here into Springfield. Take on third core. Army of the Cumberland. So I want him in here in Springfield, and I want to then leapfrog the harem up into Peoria. And I'm probably going to end up sending the Army of Missouri into Quincy, as I'm going to have to use the Indian Army to take on what's left of the Army of Southwest Missouri here. Even though we're still heavily outnumbered, these units are not in good condition, so they're kind of easy fights. Uh, the siege train took a lot more casualties in that battle than I was hoping it would. It's now carrying 2,600 casualties in it. And I'm really worried about where these guys are going to retreat to. I'm hoping they do not retreat up towards uh, Fort Kearney. Though they just might. I need them to move north and east and get away from the area while we get Missouri flipped over to us. All right. I think that covers everything for right now, and I don't have anything to add for the historical record this episode. So, it is June 1st, which means uh, we're going to jump into the uh, June monthlies here. All right. Current rating of our nation is BB. This says BB minus, so it's BB plus up here. So, a lot of times this does not match. Uh, debt increased by another 50 million. We, do, we are continuing to cut bonds. Current liabilities map to 715 million. Current economy cycle is recovery. Wealth of the population is mediocre, increasing. It says our tax revenues increased by 81 million. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, did not construct any buildings last month. Total exports were 421 million out, with 434 coming in. So we're kind of keeping a pace as at almost even on with that. Average core production over the last three months was 145 million. They changed negative 1.9 million to the previous month. And we're still lacking flour, iron, artillery, ammunition. All the stuff that we're usually lacking. I'm hoping to really take care of that at some point. Yeah, as you see here, we are still well outspending what we are bringing in. Yeah, total revenues are 78 million. We're spending 620 million. So, uh, 
yeah, I do need to get some government funding stuff worked on. I did lower how much we're pumping into diplomacy since we now brought the British into the war. I did have this maxed out. It's now back down to very low at 17 million. So we do need to change. I think I need to pump up industry a bit here. Highs of 4.93 million. That's not bad. Get that to 5 even. Military still 25. Yes, yeah, so... I think it's the worst I've actually had the uh, Confederate economy before. I usually get it running fairly well. It's a matter of basically getting out the uh, the ports in the uh, the Gulf cleared out. But I do want the Mississippi cleared so I get better supplies up to my armies here. Just turn that off for now. All right, intelligence. All right, they're still working on the Emancipation Proclamation. I'm surprised that is not done yet, though. It's a little. It's going to be a little too late now, so the British are already involved. Recruited no new troops. They've started building one new ship. The morale arms is currently at 64%. I don't think that's accurate. And it shows two officers being killed. I think we only did kill the two officers. Sometimes we kill more, but uh, Martindale and Montgomery both been killed in action. Your strategy, national morale, they're at 72 to our 97. There's national support still fairly high at 81 to our 85. Yeah, they're currently in morale sitting at 61 to our 79. Men fielded, they have 312,799 to field to our 202,359. Uh, naval tonnage, they're at 201,120 to our 34,870. So I'm still waiting on those two ironclads to get built. They are taking a very long time. Uh, total casualties so far, they had 103,281 casualties to our 35,307. So we've been really hammering away at the Federals here. Policies. We are still working on Mexico intervention or supporting the intervention. That's going to be another 18 days to complete. As soon as that is done, we are going to jump over here to Government Funding 1, which it says is going to take 103 days. I really hope it does not. That's going to take forever. Because we do control some Union territory that does not support us. That does make some of these projects take longer. Alright, projects. What do we have available to us? Take another level of railroad construction. Take the market reform. We don't need the Austrian or French weapons. Actually, the French ones... I really don't need the Lorenzes. They're good weapons, but they're short range. Actually, let's take the French weapons are expensive, so let's take those, see what we can get out of that. And I do want the medium range carbines. There we go. That sucked up all of our money. We've done that. Let's take a look at what we can get weapons-wise from the French now. So we're still producing the Frank Wesson carbines, which have a range of 275. I want longer range carbines. And I think that's going to be the Jocelyn's. And the mini 1851s have a range of 420 yards, really. Oh, I think we need to start ordering these. 257 days for 10,000, I'll take. the Augustans. Well, we can't even get them anyway. I didn't take the Austrian weapons. And yeah, let's start producing those Jocelyns. 
10,000 pieces. 457 days for 10,000 of those, but they are going to help. And we do have units that are armed with these weapons, so having replacement weapons coming in is going to be helpful. Alright, I think that covers everything for right now, so I'll be back with the next incident. Alright, it's now June 3rd, and 1st Corps Army of Virginia under command of David Hunter is once again attacking us at Winchester. They're bringing 25,000, uh, correction, 27,549 infantry, 196 cavalry, 43 guns, going up against Johnston and his 14,212 infantry, 1,257 cavalry, 33 guns. Now, I really can't remember 1st Corps Army of Virginia has attacked us here before. And if David Hunter was in charge of it, but uh, I'm hoping it's going to be an interesting fight. I don't know. We'll see. The Federals have been kind of disappointing lately. Now, welcome, my grunts, to the third battle of Winchester. So, uh, once again, we are defending Kernstown with the Federals coming in along the uh, Martinsburg Turnpike as usual. They would attack from the same direction. Uh, French's division set up to the left with a line of skirmishers from his division, extending our line out this way along the fence line here. I have Jackson's division in the center with one brigade on the fence line with French, and these two brigades are going to be building uh, breastworks right here along the road. I have the Valley Artillery set up in the center of the line, basically covering both approach roads down into uh, Kernstown. And I have Watkins' division on the right, kind of offset here because of the deployment zone, they're going to be extending onto the road here on this hillside with their artillery battery and Stewart's cavalry sitting in reserve of that division. This division's been a little questionable in every fight in the last two fights. These guys were kind of questionable. I think uh, we've gotten most basically all the smooth bores and uh, mixed uh, muskets out. This is the last. Hyman's Brigade is the last one actually still using reboard mixed muskets as uh, rifled muskets become available to us. So we almost got every, all the main combat armies so far basically have had most of their poor weapons taken away from them. So, uh, yeah, now we just got to wait for the Federals to show up. It's now 1500, so, and it's June, so we'll definitely see them before the end of the day. But it'll probably be towards the end of the day that we see them. Maybe we can get this done today, maybe not. Their morale is not looking too hot. It's still fairly good. It's F43 to our 58. So we'll see what happens. All right, it's now 1730. We do have federal sided cavalry infantry coming down the main road here. Uh, U.S. Cavalry Battalion and 1st Brigade, 2nd Division, 1st Corps. And there is infantry along this road here. So they're coming. There they are. 1st Brigade, 1st Division. Gray uniforms of the Connecticut or Jersey. So we're just getting our defensive works finished as they're coming into view. I did have the cavalry back here building more just to uh, get their levels up for their perks. Which we're almost done with, except for the uh, 7th. So, late day battle. He's not blocked by that house. Good. And I'm hoping these MSG boys hold out better than they did last time. So I should probably transfer this brigade back out west where they belong. Let's get that first level. There we go. Now the rifles. Any 
hopefully they just mess up along the main road here. I'll just be able to swoop down on them with the French's division. Capture ourselves some more uh, Springfield rifles out of this battle. I do have some artillery side to see, boys. Counter battery. Okay, I guess they don't like this road. <laughs> they are moving away from it. Alright, looks like they might be trying to get around our flank. Stop what you're doing. How are we looking? Almost there. I'll let you keep going. Still building, right? No, would you stop? I just wanted this brigade to halt. That charge icon turned off. Oh, they're really moving around out here. Alright, I guess Hunt's being smart. Alright, French, recall your skirmishers. Boys, come over here. Finish up and get that perk. Right, French skirmishers are coming in. I'm going to have them come over here and extend the line further right. Leave Jackson place in the center. They're changing their minds. Most of the forces are still back here in town, but <coughs> I wonder if we're gonna see this assault before day two. Probably not.
Alright, maybe I won't be moving French. I'm not sure. They may be going for my battery here in the center. You guys came up just short of getting that purple. You'll get some after a few rounds. One or two volleys. for my main battery here. Not the smartest idea in the world. Sooner than later, let's finish up over there. Not really leveling, that's disheartening. That's pretty good, boys. Mm, yeah, get the boys over here. The Rockbridge Artillery, they got beat up pretty good. 22 losses out of the uh, 38 men they had. Should be dropping canister into these brigades here. Boy, stop what you're doing. Let's go. Need you now. Can't move front of Jackson because they got more troops coming down the road here. Get your skirmishers back out. I'm actually amazed at how hard he's pushing in this attack, but he's uh, taking down my batteries pretty damn handily. Smart move. Wounded. 
Colonel Drake. that battery please that battery. Good job, Stuart. These batteries. Push in. Get to clear this flank out.
Just realized my microphone is muted that for a good chunk of that. Jeez. I really gotta replace this microphone. Alright, maybe your casualties than I expected. Took down 2,400 of their 27,000 infantry, 90 of their 200 cavalry, 30 of their 40 guns, total loss of 2,700 of their 27,000 men. We lost 856 of our 14,208 cal uh, infantry, 163 of our 1,257 cavalry, 10 of our 33 guns. Total loss of 1,115, about 15,895 men. Those two batteries that went away, they took a lot of casualties. I wonder if they're even going to reconstitute after this battle. Alright, we lost quite a few officers. Uh, Drake, Watkins, and McCall. So we lost three officers wounded. They really pushed that attack in hard, and I thought they would. Let's see, uh, no viewer units in this army. We're just going to see what officers of theirs we got. If any. Uh, we killed Wessels. Battery commanders from New Jersey, Artillery, Clark, and Ross. And two more battery commanders, Hazard and Tannen. Alright, four of theirs wounded, one dead for uh, three of ours wounded. Looks like someone's going to be getting a promotion to a division command now. I'm going to close out of here and I'll see you at the post at the uh, newspaper screen. Victory! At the fourth battle of Winchester. I think I called it the third battle at the start, but it's uh, the fourth battle. The army supported several total casualties of 2,678 men. There are 502 killed and 501 captured. Our casualties told 1,115 men, 165 killed, 145 missing, and the rest are wounded. We captured 1,000 rifles and 8 guns from the field and sent 516 soldiers off to our prison camps. Looks like you blamed the poor old major for that battle, and, uh, French somehow became famous out of that battle, even though he didn't do too much fighting. I don't know. I don't understand that one. Yeah, before that rolls off, I gotta find some replacements. So battery command so going forward, because battery commanders generally don't get promoted. I'm gonna be looking at what state they're from, look for a battery commander from that state to replace the brigade commander. And then uh, go from there. Try and get those guys promoted. Some battery commanders are actually really good and you don't use them in, at all. So, I'll come back in with the officer replacements once I figure out what, who's going where. Alright, so apparently I had a, still a bunch of colonels on standby, so uh, replacements have been put out. Uh, Adams from Mississippi has taken over this brigade here. And uh, Gilmore from Maryland is taking over that battery. So, and Ewell, who was commander of a brigade in the Army of Potomac, is now taking over command of uh, Drake's division. So, these, things, these don't have division names, they just go with the names of the commanders. This Confederacy did previously. I didn't go through and rename everything, which I should have. It makes things easier. Having everything numbered up. But uh, Yule is the best man. Most senior and... Look at these stats. <laughs> you, you can't argue with those stats. He's a very, very good commander. He's probably one of the best division commanders I have right now. Speaking of which... I should promote... All the division commanders to Major General...
Go through to see if any of them have gotten famous. He's famous, but not very good stats, but he should get the promotion. Same here with Thomas. Same with Anderson. Sibley. Armistead. Uh, Pillow's already a major general. That covers everybody for now. And LZ. Get that battle rolled off, and I'll come back in with the next incident. All right, it's now June 10th, and we do have a combat here down at Cairo. The 1st and 2nd Corps Army of Cumberland, minus their uh, army headquarters, is too far away. Is attacking Lee's Army of the Mississippi, which I had encamped at Cairo to uh, get their readiness up. I was actually just getting ready to move them when these two corps showed up, so... Uh, Definitely going to drop his readiness down even further, so he's probably going to be uh, left out the rest of the spring campaign, which has now moved into summer. It's kind of stalled out. So we have 2nd Corps Army of the Cumberland, commanded by Irvin McDowell, 1st Corps Army of the Cumberland. They're bringing 46,607 infantry, 1,206 cavalry, and 34 guns. Going up against Lee with his 23,965 infantry, 2,005 cavalry, and 37 guns. I'm wondering how these two corps are going to play together, considering their army commanders down on the field. And you, even though both these corps are part of the same army, generally in this game, and factual to real life, the two corps don't act in concert with each other. Because, you know, corps commanders don't like playing with each other unless there's a higher command on the field. So, uh, yeah, let's go jump into this one. Hopefully it's a good fight. Welcome, my grunts, to the Battle of Cairo. It's uh, 1730 of day one at 68 degrees with a thunderstorm rolling in. So uh, not the best time for fighting, though. I don't think there's going to be any fighting today as the Union's entering here. So probably mostly going to be set up back here with the AI back at the start point. So they do have a couple of approach routes to get to us. We're defending back here at... Proud Run Bridge. So they can come straight down the railroad line, this road here, this road network here, and this road network here. So there's a couple of different approach paths. So I'm already set up defensively. Minus one brigade out of position because I'm going to have them build breastworks here. So we have level CSMC division, which has the first and second CSMC and the Imperial Old Guard set to cut up this cover this crossing here with the uh, second on the left the Imperial Old Guard on the right and first CSMC centered as a reserve because they can flex to both of these divisions so it's a good spot for them where's your division commander he's back here so we have Clark's division facing this road here with Sasha's Black Legs McGowan's Battery Danish Lifeguards and the Yale County Rifles we have Canty's division on our right with the 11th Georgia Volunteer Infantry, the 1st CS Infantry, and Queen Vicky's Verb. 1st uh, CS is set up back here because they're going to start building some breastworks down this way, so they're going to start there and work their way down. 
And I have the five batteries of the artillery division kind of spread out all over the place on our viewer units, so I'm not gonna bring them up. Plus the two brigades of cavalry are sitting reserve in the center, which is the uh, 7th Virginia Cavalry Brigade and the North Georgia Mounted Rifles. I'm gonna have both, yeah, I'm gonna have them both dismount, do some uh, breastwork construction, get their levels up. So we may or may not see the Federals today. I'm kind of down it, but we could still see them. So uh, I think I rambled on long enough. We'll get things going. I'll come back in once we have contact with the Federals. All right, so now 1925 at day one, we have our first sighting on Federals. And it's a uh, third brigade, first division, second corps under Schimmelfanning. And, okay, looks like I'm going to have to send my cavalry back here to watch this bridge. I think I might be in an encirclement battle. The way he's, he's marching out this way, so he's probably going for my uh, rear crossing. Interesting. The only unit I see so far. But it is now towards the end of the day, so he's not going to be hitting this point anytime soon, but... We saw in a previous battle where the Federals did attempt to outflank me in this fashion. I uh, forget which battle it was. It's an episode or two. Or I think it was two episodes ago, maybe three. So that is interesting. But he's the only unit I see. can't see past them, so you come over here. You guys are leveling nicely. Looks like my cavalry will have something to do this fight. If they keep trying to push around. Don't know if they will or not, but uh, it's 19.30 now. Day's going to be over in about 25 minutes. So, looks like I'll be coming back for a day two start. Alright, it's now 5 a.m. of day two. Uh, we did have a reset. The Federals kind of got pushed back into this area, and I can hear a lot of them back here. I also noticed one battery present as it started firing on my men, and I wasn't able to sight them, so I just had my infantry laid down. And it looks like they're going to try to continue marching around us. A uh, day previous, I did start ordering my divisional artillery to come around on, along this road here to harass the Federals as they try to move through the woods here towards the bridge and help to break their morale a little bit as they come around on that point. Uh, federal morale has improved. It started, we started out basically even on morale-wise yesterday. They're now at 55, so it has gone up by almost 10 points. And I took 248 men overnight attrition to their 100. Uh, they're 75. I think I'd caused about 25 casualties to the one brigade from artillery fire. So... Even though we're on the defensive, we control K Road. It is not a friendly state, so that does count against my morale pretty heavily. And I'm surprised our morale took such a drop overnight. Our morale should have gone up as we were holding the defense point. Right. Still looks like it's going to be a little while before anything kicks off, so. Men are continuing to build their breastworks and prepare for the federal arrival. All right, it's now 6 a.m. and it appears this uh, federal division, uh, the first division, second corps, has uh, halted their attempt to move around through the wood line here, and is uh, now approaching the railroad bridge. Do have some skirmishers from the second CSMC out forward? As I was trying to get this battery over here sighted, as it did manage to break one of my batteries over here. And continue to work this one over. Sadly, it was actually my battery with the Blakeleys, which does very well against the infantry at long range. Looks like these skirmishers are uh, doing a fairly good job against these boys right here. 
You're not blocking a line of fire, you are. I can bring you boys back in. We know they're coming this way, so. And we unmax this gun. So that's even better. This rainstorm is hard to keep the federal side. So far, this is the only force that we have seen. Oh, hello. Second Illinois Regiment may have found the hole in my line. Right, you boys, stop what you're doing. Yep, they found the hole. I can hear them over here. So they're moving against it. Like this fight's going to turn very interesting for us. Now, if everybody's wondering, a uh, battle brew for this episode is fighting 69th Whiskey. I've not been announcing it the last few episodes like I usually do. You guys are just slow stepping. That is a lot of troops right there. What I'm going to do is hand out some bombardment orders for this area. Holt orders, yes you did. Alright, mount up. Send you right there. Now, I'm not going to turn the first CS just yet until I see more than that cavalry. We know there's more there, I'm just going to wait until we see more of them. That may mean... I don't hear anybody on this road. So I should be able I might be able to shift the entire division. Once the cavalry's in place, I'm probably gonna shift the entire division along this line here where my mouse is moving. It's like we're gonna have a woods fight. Are you boys gonna hit this bridge anytime soon. A lot of dispatch riders coming from back this way. Sure, the Imperial Old Guard gets in on some of that action. I'm surprised nobody's coming at this Ford. You generally don't see the, any attacking force when the AI try to use the railroad bridge. They usually use the Ford over here. And there's the Federals moving into the wood. There's some infantry right there. Since Virginia will seal up this cavalry regiment easily. There's only 200 men in it. But 
I wonder if they're actually going to try and support this push by sending troops along here. Sounds like 7th Virginia's opened up. Alright boys, dismount, loose order. Why they turn their backs when doing that's beyond me. Let's bring you boys up. Did they already stop working? I think they did. They shouldn't have. I think they stopped working on those breastworks. First CS swing onto that flank. And second CSMC is about to get their first perk. That's still building, right? Yep. They are really messed up here, so besides the cat this brigade getting hit, you can see casualties dropping back here too. You're almost done with that, so I'll let you keep working. Looks like they may start trying to come down the road now. These are actual batteries and not battalions, so they do take any amount of casualties really drops them down. Got okay, your first perk. Yep, and battery broke. Yeah, 32 losses, 25 men left. That was going to happen. Next to jump. Oh, we do have men coming down the road. This looks like the cavalry regiment so far, though, but just in case. Looks like a full court press by the Federals. Just map look like. Yeah, they are pushing.
All right, yell count to give it to them. That looks like they just laid down. All right, black legs, don't feel me like you did the last first battle you fought in. Stop building, just hit them. They're on that, they got that protection of the stone wall. Flank up, yeah. I just opened their flank up to get hit, but let's get rid of this brigade and we'll push on to this fence line. on your guns. I'm going to have you boys move up to the stone wall. I'm going to for... Come out this way. No, don't break on me. Same thing. So you can see, you stop building those breastworks. You're going to have to replace this black legs. That barrel brigade, good. All right, they're breaking. Yeah, Black Lakes just broke. Shouldn't have happened, but it did. That brigade. All right, they should be withdrawing soon. Looks like the verbs just not getting a chance to really fight today. The 11th Georgia. He really expected the other push to come down that road. And the Imperial Guard broke. Hold those orders. Did not expect them to break. And 
they're just starting to move away. They were drawn. And North Georgia Mountain Rifles are not. There's a brigade there we can't see. Awesome. They was drawn or continue to push forward. They're trying to get to that crossing. Up oh, there goes the North Georgia Mountain Rifles. I also can't tell if they want to withdraw or not. It seems like they are, and it seems like they're not. It's kind of weird. Oh, got very glitchy. I think the withdrawal orders just went out. Yell County's getting a little unstable, really. <coughs> yeah, they're trying to retreat past these guys sitting on the bridge now. Come on, Hill, get the men moving, you're missing out. go. Looks like they tried marching into them. Boys back at long range. Alright, Danes, push forward. Hit the next brigades. There's the retreat order. Give me those guns. And I'm going to try and march right past this Yell County. Give me those guns. Four minutes left. Not going to get much more done. We just cause a few more casualties on these boys. Grab me up some of them feds as you pass them by. And that's it, we are out of time. That was an interesting fight. That was interesting. Because the feds really pushed out attacking on two fronts at the same time. I'm kind of amazed by that. You know, I think it's their initial push across the bridge with the one division before everybody else was in place that kind of doomed their endeavor to a failure. 
Otherwise, they might have actually won with how my brigade's morale was uh, playing out. So we took down 4,900 of their 50,000 infantry, 350 of their 1,300 cavalry. We got 25 of their 40 guns. Total loss of 5,500 of their 51,000 men. We lost 1,152 of our 23,961 infantry, 191 of our 2,003 cavalry, 14 of our 38 guns because a couple of batteries did break, but we get those guns back. Total loss of 1,400 of our 26,490 men. I don't think we lost anybody wounded. Nope. Yeah, time to go through the combat reports. So this is a viewer unit core, so this is going to take a little longer than usual. All right, we'll go through strength first. Look at the casualties. North Georgia Mounted Rifles took 39 killed, 86 wounded, 39 missing for a total of 164, aggregate strength of 860. 7th Virginia Cavalry had 4 killed, 8 wounded, 15 go missing for a total of 27, aggregate of 952. That's so 16% and 3% casualties respectively. CSMC Division. 2nd CSMC had 15 killed, 79 wounded, 35 go missing for a total of 129, aggregate strength of 2,463. Imperial Old Guards had 33 killed, 167 wounded, 36 go missing, total 236, aggregate strength of 2,463. 1st CSMC Brigade had 0 killed, wounded, 1 man go missing, so that's 1 man from overnight attrition. Total of 2,684, and CSMC Battery A had 28 wounded, 4 go missing. None of them were actually killed. That's kind of amazing. Aggregate strength of 25. Division total of 7,635. Clark's Division, Yale County Rifles, had 28 killed, 181 wounded, 63 go missing. Total of 272. Brigade strength 2,276, 11% casualties. Danish lifeguards, 25 killed, 80 wounded, 41 missing, total 146. Aggregate strength, 2,287, 6% casualties. Sasha's Black Legs, 24 killed, 171 wounded, 62 missing, total 257. Aggregate strength, 2,429, 10% casualty rate. McGowan's Battery had 5 wounded, 1 go missing, total 6. Aggregate 45, 12%, 6, <laughs> six men is a 12% casualty rate for that battery. Casualty rate of 8% for the division. Canty's division, 11th Georgia Volunteers, 4 dead, 9 wounded, 48 missing, total 61, 2% casualties. 1st CS, 0 killed, wounded, 29 missing, total 2,756. Queen Vicky's Verb, no killed or wounded, 21 missing, total 2,757, 1% rate. Crawford's Battery, 0 killed, 0 wounded, 1 missing. I'll get a 60%. One man is 2% of their force. 1% for the division. So only only the Lovins Georgia actually fought. Canty's division. Oh wait, I just looked at Canty. Alright. LZ's bat uh, division, which is the batteries. Johnson's battery, three killed, two wounded, one missing, total of six. Westcott's battery, three killed, two missing, total of five. Hodge's battery. Two missing. Coltart's battery, two missing. Young's battery, one killed, one wounded, one missing. So these are all batteries, they're not battalions, so they're very small, so any type of casualties does a one or two casualties like breaks these guys. Alright, combat report. North Georgia Mounted Rifles did 108 to infantry. 7th Virginia Cavalry did 90 to infantry, 77 to cavalry, 5 to artillery, total 172, division total 280. CSMC Division, 2nd CSMC did 1,627 to infantry, captured 19, 28 to cavalry, 68 to artillery, total 1,742. Looks like they'll probably get in the uh, Grumpy Seal approval for this battle. Imperial Old Guards, 554 to infantry, 53 to cavalry, 8 to artillery, total 615. 1st CSMC did not fight. And Battery A, CSMC, did 56 to infantry. Division total, 2,413. Clark's Division, Yale County Rifles, did 602 to infantry, captured 82. Took 12 cavalry prisoners, patrol 696. Danish Lifeguards did 599 to infantry, captured 11. 
12 charge loader patrol 622. Sasha's Black Legs did 363 to infantry. And McGowan's Battery did 78 to infantry, captured 7. Patrol of 85, division patrol 1766. Canty's Division, 11th Georgia did 81 to cavalry. Uh, first CS actually did do some fighting. They did 66 to infantry, captured 64, 46 to artillery, patrol 176. Uh, Queens Vicky's Verb did 23 to cavalry. And Crawford's Battery did 23 to cavalry. Again, division total of 303. And LZ's Division, Johnson's Battery did 10 to infantry. Westcott's Battery did 87 to infantry, 21 to cavalry, 1 artillery, patrol 109. And Westcott's the one that broke, and that was my Blakely rifles. You can see the Blakely's a really good weapon. Everybody else has got 14 pounder James rifles. Hodge did 28 to infantry. Coltart did 21 to infantry, 1 archery patrol, 22 PMB. Young's battery did 65 to infantry, 12 to archery patrol, 77. Division total, 246. I think I need to start ordering more of those 12 pound Blakely's. They're, they're really good against infantry, even at long range. All right, let's see if we got any of the federal officers. All right, wounded Colonel Board of 2nd Kentucky Cavalry. And there's a mixture of two units here. It's a major, so I'm assuming that's a battery was wounded. They gotta get all these separate units into divisions. Alright, two officers from First Corps. General Wade. And a battery commander, Grant. And we got four other officers. For as hard as they were pushing, I'm surprised there was so few officers. I'll get closed out of here and I'll see you all at the newspaper screen. A victory at the Battle of Cairo. The Emmons reportedly suffered total casualties of 5,430 men. There were 832 killed and 1,074 captured. Our casualties total 1,400 men with 179 killed, 404 missing, and the rest are wounded. We've captured 2,346 rifles. We desperately need those. And nine guns from the field and sent 1,006 soldiers off to our prison camps. It looks like they managed to blame this loss on a poor old colonel. Of course they did. Right, get that battle rolled off. I think that probably seriously dropped Lee's readiness. Okay, yeah, it did. So, we're going to push on without him. As he gets his readiness back up. So, Army of Western Tennessee, you're going to move on to Springfield. And the harem, we're going to push you up river to pay Aurea. Well, the federal gunboats are down this way, so I'm not worried about them intercepting us while we're moving. I want to do it while we have supply. So the Army of Missouri, I did push up towards Bloomington, as that's where the Army of Southwest Missouri retreated to. I'm trying to force them out of the state. We need Missouri to flip over to us. So they're on their way to do that right now. I have actually dispatched the Indian Army up here to Council Bluffs. And they're actually still ready to move. So I'm going to have them move against Davenport. And the siege train is actually now on its way to St. Joseph. Hopefully it doesn't... Their readiness is low, but I'm trying to get them into St. Joseph where their readiness can get up higher. From there, I'm going to move them up river to Omaha City so they can move against Fort Kearney along the Oregon Trail. So if we try to send them this way, it'll take them forever to get up the roadway. So sending them up river to Omaha City, then we can actually have them travel. Uh, no, it's probably too shallow to travel this waterway. But uh, hopefully travel from river from Omaha City to Kearney, but I'm looking doubtful on that. Probably too shallow. Grant withdrawing. Oh, I guess he's the uh, overall army commander. 
Yeah, how bad is this going to affect Lee? 62 days to full readiness, 40 days that... Oh, Army Southwest Missouri does want to put up a fight, even though they just massively lost a battle. But they got 39,000 infantry, 3,200 cavalry, and 13 guns against my... 5,900 infantry, 3,500 mounted rifles, and 19 guns. I didn't think their morale would be high enough to put up a fight. But we're going to save this one for next episode. It's either going to be really shortened against me or a good victory. We'll see. So I'll leave you all hanging in suspense for this one. So uh, once again, if you're a new viewer, return view, you're not yet subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button. If you do, remember that bell icon so our next video comes out. Follow along in the series and enjoying it, don't forget to bayonet that like button, butt stroke that comment section. And I will see you all in the next episode. Stay grumpy.